Well, let's get into the first the first topic, and that is with looking at this. There was a, there's a video that was just recently done, and it's not the first time I've heard about it. And and um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on talking about the Great Reset that is um, that was done by the World Economic Forum that's really trying to bring in. Um, uh, CBDC, which is central bank digital currencies, um, and that this is now the mark of the beast. Now, should we should we be worried about this? Um, I think I suppose one of like one of the biggest topics that happens when we're talking end times is the mark of the beast. And so today, I wanted to really you know, kind of delve into that. I know Dr. Rod said. You know, it doesn't really matter. But I think that's great. Like, let's let's talk about that. Before we do, I want to share with you from Revelation, Revelation, no Revelations, um, uh, that uh, Revelation thirteen, uh, chapter thirteen, verse sixteen to seventeen. This is where the mark of the beast conversation comes from. It is also forced. All people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, uh, to receive a mark on their right hand or their foreheads, so they could not buy uh, or sell unless they had the mark, which in the name, of, uh, which is in the name of the beast or the number of its name. Now, Doctor Rod, the mark of the beast. Um, Every like every time there seems to be some new technology, they seem to be saying, "Well, that's now the mark of the beast. That's now the mark of the beast." What? Before we get like really into all the things that are happening, what? What is the mark of the beast, and how does that play out with end times? Well, the short answer is we don't know exactly what the mark of the beast is, but we do know that it's something which is voluntarily taken by people uh, in the end times. And uh, as it says there in the book of Revelation in chapter 13, that with the mark of the beast, you are actually allowed to engage with the economy. If you don't take it, then you're going to be shut out of the economy. Um, it's really difficult to get a handle on this in many ways because we've been around this mulberry bush many times before, mm -hmm. and you've already alluded to that. I remember when credit cards were first introduced, <laughs> that was the mark of the beast. And there've been yep. um, the development of microchip technology, which we now happily uh, use with our pets so we don't lose them and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That technology was said to be the mark of the beast. There was lots of talk during COVID about the mark of the beast. And now we're talking about these central bank digital currencies as being associated with the mark of the beast. I, I'm a little bit sceptical about this mainly because I don't know where the people who are propagating this idea, I really don't know how they understand the book of Revelation. So I don't know whether they think we're in the middle of the tribulation or not, but I don't think there's enough signs to suggest that we are in the middle of the tribulation. Now, the the, the mark of the beast, as I said, is something which is voluntarily taken by people. If I can take a few moments to kind of put this whole thing into context, the uh, Revelation... The book of Revelation chapter 13 really is describing a counterfeit trinity. So most of us Christians believe in the trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So God the Father, God the Son in Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, and of course the Holy Spirit, who's with us now. And um, the, the counterfeit trinity is Satan, the anti-God, the beast from the sea, the anti-Christ, and the beast from the land, the anti-Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. Okay. The Now, Satan, of course, is also described as, as the dragon. The beast from the sea is, a, it's, a, it's obviously an image. The beast from the sea is interpreted by many as representing something which rises up from the Gentile nations. And I would suggest that that is one world government. And then the beast from the land, uh, many would interpret, represents Israel. And the beast of the, sorry, the beast uh, from the land is also referred to as the false prophet or, or as I say, the anti 
Holy Spirit. And it's the beast from the sea, which is the one that um, implements the, the mark of the beast. So when I see people in podcasts or, or listen to sermons where people talk about the mark of the beast, what I'm looking for is, so how does this fit with the whole picture in Revelation chapter 13 of the counterfeit trinity? Okay, so CBDC. I know we've we've mentioned it before, and we've we've kind of kind of you know touched on it from a leadership perspective as well as kind of looking at economically. As an economist, um, and it, it almost seems like as an economist and a Christian, when it comes to this mark of the beast CBDC kind of conversation, you're very juxtaposed because the economist should be, you know, what's best for the economy. And then the the Christian side as well, it's now the mark of the beast and everything like that. Now, obviously the CBDC is not in and of itself the mark of the beast. However, we're seeing it when, it, when it refers to um, revelation being, if you've got it, you can engage in 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 commerce, but if you if if you if you don't have it, you can't, and that's kind of what we're seeing in China, who is doing. You're kind of done the extreme CBDC, um, and now they're doing social scoring and and all that sort of stuff through facial identification and and all that sort of stuff with your activities. Um, how does that play out with this whole conversation? Oh, look, honestly, it's it's very scary. It really is very scary indeed. As Christians, I think what we need to understand is that, yes, we are um, promised prosperity. We're we're promised that we're going to prosper um, spiritually, financially, physically, mentally, socially. But one thing Jesus does say is that you will be persecuted because of me. Mm. Uh, Christians in China and many other countries now are subject to great persecution. And that has been the case throughout the Christian age, from the first coming of Jesus to his second coming. So we I don't think we should look at these things necessarily as signs that we are in the end times or that the end times themselves are imminent. What I think they do reflect though is the satanic impulse that there is in the world. Remember, Satan's sin was this. He said, I will be like the most high. In other words, he really wanted his own throne to be raised up to be at the same level or even higher than that of God. And I think this is the impetus that we see in all of the mechanisms that are designed to restrict the freedom of individuals and to control us. It's the impetus behind what many people interpret as the desire by the World Economic Forum and others to um, to uh, design one world government. Now, of course, I don't believe that's going to happen before uh, Revelation 13. So I'm not really frightened about world one, uh, one world government at this stage. But you see, I think, I think it reflects the satanic impulse. Mm. And you don't find Christians who are at the peak of these kinds of bodies. So, I, so when you say the satanic impulse, you're referring to not the fact that we're using the CBDC It's more the people that are organising the CBDC, they're the ones that are trying to be in control, therefore be in the the throne, and they are the ones that have the the satanic impulse. Yeah, They do. I'm I'm, I'm guessing a lot will will feel insulted by that because they don't feel as if they're Satan, they don't feel as if they're motivated by some kind of satanic impulse, but it's subtle, it's deceitful, and it will always seek to restrict freedom and to control people. And ultimately, that's what this technology has the capacity to do in the hands of evil people. So so let, let me jump on that then from when when you okay, so people using CBDC are not are not the satanic ugh. I know this. I'm, we're going to get murdered in the in the. In well, the look, comments, Christians Christians but, use yeah. these technologies. It's in yeah. Every but, time you go onto the internet, you know, you're being spied on. Yeah. Um, and, but, and so look, I, I suppose what I mean is is when we're talking about, like you mentioned, the satanic impulse by 
the governing bodies that are trying to make this one more government, one more currency, all, the, all those sorts of things to be able to control credit score, so, social scores and all that sort of stuff, which is kind of what we're talking about at the Mark of the Beast, then they're the ones that are kind of sinning and everything. The people that are using the CBDC are not the satanic ones because they're just using a currency. No, no, not at all. Not at so all. then when we look at Revelation about you know, you know, you know, the people being marked with the beast and the ones not, does that mean if we partake in that system, we now have the mark of the beast and therefore no, we are I, I, now lost? I, I, I don't think that is the case because in Revelation 13, the mark of the beast is a specific recognition of the beast from the sea, right? So okay. we're, we're, we're not recognising the beast from the sea. So the beast from the sea, is, as I say, is part of that counterfeit trinity of Satan, the beast from the sea and the beast from the land. I don't think you know, the fact that I use a credit card or that I might be using digital currency, that in no way means that I have willingly uh, and with all my faculties intact, mm. sworn allegiance to yes. the beast from the sea who represents, that's the Antichrist, he represents Satan, who, of course, is the anti-God. Yeah. So as, as a Christian, as a pastor, I am not seeking to have power and to control people. Yeah. So the satanic impulse is this impulse that so many have to um, to aggregate power and have control. I mean, this is the kind of thing that sits behind things like uh, domestic and family violence. Mm -hmm. It sits behind, in historical times, the building of great empires. Yeah. It sits behind the impetus to war. Uh, it sits behind the impetus of things like we're talking about here now, uh, the World Economic Forum and and the multilateral agencies, the United Nations and so on. They Everything they are doing seeks control, seeks to embed power, and ultimately what it does is it restricts individual freedom. Now, mm. in the idea of individual freedom is intrinsically Christian. Yes. So it's really a, what it boils down to is Satan is attacking Jesus because he's undermining Christianity. Mm. That's what's going on. And look, this is this is the story of the fallenness of all of creation. Okay, I I, I, re, I I'm glad we had this conversation because I actually feel like that is that's a very important distinction because I think we as Christians can get quite easily caught up in. Um, if someone is involved in something that we believe is the mark of the beast, then they're lost, right? Like, well, you're you're part of the mark of the beast then because you're using CBDC or digital currencies or or whatever. I think that's an important distinction. It doesn't it doesn't mean it, if whatever it is that is the mark of the beast, we can't. It's not like we can't participate and have to like run away and, and stuff like that. It's just don't. Don't do the worshiping of that, and don't do the seeking and uh, of the of the. You're right. Seek yeah. Jesus Christ, relationship mm. with God through Jesus Christ. Remember the prayer of Jesus in uh, John seventeen, I think it is. Um, the, that what I sometimes call the oneness prayer. We're, we're to seek relationship with one another as Christians to seek fellowship with God through Jesus Christ by the agency of the Holy Spirit. Here on earth, that should be our focus. Yeah. Um, and we, we can't go too far wrong. On the other hand, I think it is right and proper that Christian leaders, um, like, argue as diligently and as articulately as they can that we must not get rid of cash. Yes. In other yep. words, we, we should be standing up for individual freedom at every opportunity that we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. So, yeah, I, I'm just trying to think that. I, I, I think I'm going to about take us down a whole nother path now, so I, I, I won't bring that up because I, I do want to transition to the next story because you, you mentioned about Israel being one of those, um, 
you mentioned Israel before being one of those beasts. Well, the the, the beast from the land will, will sort of emerge out of Israel. It won't necessarily be the whole of Israel, no. of course. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, just you mentioned Israel and I thought, yep. okay. Yep. So CBDC, not evil, not the mark of the beast. Maybe the people that are trying to organise complete control over everyone, that is definitely a sign of the beast. That, and so let's let's not... We don't have to run for the hills and and start living off the grid to to try to make sure that we 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 are saved or whatever. But um, definitely, as leaders, we need to be emphasising the fight for freedom in in all areas in using cash. And, Absolutely, and everything Absolutely. like that. We so should. We should. I think that's I think that's a really good distinction. Hey, you've just watched an excerpt from the On The Cube Leadership Podcast. If you've liked that, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any thoughts of how it challenged or helped your leadership, put a comment below. And we'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing for more leadership content. Also, make sure you check out the playlist for more episodes like this.